I probably look at it on Boston Navy's face because I get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Pit Stop Podcast. Today we are joined by our first ever driver. It's very exciting times. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Ollie Caldwell. Woo! Woo! Hello. Thank, Hello. You, thank you very much me. for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. No this worries. Thank so you for fun. inviting us into your humble abode. Yeah, I hope it's clean enough. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. We've <laughs> stepped into your house, taken over your lounge, put these yeah, mics yeah. on these stands. We, we've, we're, we are the perfect example of all the gear, no idea. We've walked down the road <laughs> with all our lights <laughs> and our camera equipment. Pat, Very impressive. impressive. Yeah, it's quite impressive, it is isn't impressive. it? Two-man yeah. band of all this stuff. I know. But this is really exciting. For the first time, we have got a driver on the podcast and I have got so many questions. So many questions. You've got the most amazing simulator there. It's, but let's start off with, we were both in Imola this weekend. How is that for you? What day do you fly out and how does it all work? Like, what's the weekend like for you? So I flew to Imola on, on Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't need to be there until Thursday for, for local races in Europe. Yeah. Um, and then I arrive on Thursday morning. I do track walk. I do signing on. I sign a bit of pe bit of paper. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what, that, what does that paper mean? I actually don't know. <laughs> and I got a little bit with my with a, with, with my name and a yeah. box, and I just sign it. And I'm apparently allowed to race if I do that. Oh, oh wow! Okay. So I do that. Uh, we walk the track, which was a bit wet. Yeah. What uh, is track walk like? So what do you actually do? Is that you walking around, looking at like the corners, figuring out what's where? Yeah, basically. I mean, it's more to see if anything's changed from oh. either the last time we were there or if anything's different from the simulator that maybe we've done before. Um, nothing was different in Imola for us. No. Um, Had you raced there before? I'd raced in Imola, yeah. I raced there in 2018 and 2019. Cool. So, so you kind of, you knew the track a little bit already. Yeah, I was lucky I knew the track. Uh, there were quite a few rookies in Imola this year in F2, but luckily I knew it. So yeah, um, yeah, that's on track walk, seeing if anything's different. Uh, and then look through a bit of data, a bit of video, pretty boring stuff i guess mm -hmm. maybe because no real driving um do you, then, do you get do you much prefer the driving then yeah definitely is there like anyone that, that does like that stuff i don't think so no. <laughs> it's all like admin stuff no one yeah. really enjoys that <laughs> when um, you say when you say data though is that just like in terms of how the car's performing or, or how you're pushing the car so data before the weekend would just be referencing braking points gears um sort of minimum speed throttle points just so it's all in your head Right. Uh, for when you start to drive um maybe looking back through a bit of simulator data just to check um see where you were maybe struggling on the simulator before the weekend um and then just getting that in your head for before the first free practice session on friday cool um that would be sort of what's done on a friday and then a driver's briefing in the in the evening which is where the fia tells you what you can and can't do uh, that's do they? What, they do they sit all the drivers down together yeah so we all so for the first time for <laughs> like me a in school meeting basically yeah um <laughs> so since covid it was all done online and this year they brought back in person drivers meetings so we all go sit in a room all the drivers even in formula one they do it really and there's a usually the race director is at the front with a projector and one of those laser pens that no you had in school. Way. Like being this exactly is so like that. sick yeah, to yeah. learn about and uh what yeah. can't you do if you say you're told what you can and can't do, what are you not allowed to do? So driver's briefing is more track specific stuff. I mean, um, so like track limits and that particular Got, track oh, yeah, where track you can't limits, cross yeah. over at certain corners maybe. Um, yeah, mostly what you can't do, you should already know. Otherwise they get quite angry <laughs> if you're sort of saying some, some weird stuff that you might not be able to do. So um, Imola in particular was... No, they didn't actually say much in that one because there's a lot of grass there. That's kind of the track edge in Imola. Um, yeah. But maybe in tracks such as Paul Ricard, where there's no grass and it's just tarmac. On Where's the that? France. Oh, okay. France. Oh, the French, French Grand Prix. So, yeah, it's the one with all the colours on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you swing through it. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favourites. That's, that's his favourite track because if oh, he really? goes off the track, he doesn't go yeah, into a wall. So yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> just yeah, get a yeah. little time penalty <laughs> and keep going. <laughs> yeah, so that's why track limits are probably more important there. 
because you can go off and just gain time. Yeah. yeah. But in Imola with the grass, uh, you tend to lose quite a lot of time if you go off there. So I had no idea there was like a meeting of all the drivers yeah. where they're like, you can do this, you can't do It is do crazy. It. We had no idea about any of this. But then I assume all this stuff you'd have to do, really. I mean, yeah, we never think about the behind the scenes. I do have one question about Imola because there's a lot of hills in Imola, right? Mm. So, I mean, again, going back to when me and Jake play the game, we have the lines on, obviously, so you can see when to break. But I'd love to know, like, how do you judge when to break a corner if you literally, if it's like a blind corner and you can't see? So the breaking boards are a good help. Uh, those white ones that you see get destroyed. Yeah. Oh, the edge yeah. of the track oh quite is that often. what they are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they oh, are. I just go straight through them all the time. Like, I thought they were sponsor boards or something. No, no. So where it says 200, 150 <gasps> then meters I to the I thought that corner. meant how quick you were going. That makes so much sense now. <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah, adding no. up. So they're quite useful. Um, but in terms of blind corners, I mean... The only real one in Imola was turn nine, which is as you go up, up the hill to that really fast left-hander. I'm really good for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it flat. Yeah, go I go flat track, pretty much the whole way. Limits, <laughs> yeah. All of it, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Playing with no damage on on the Formula yeah, 1 game. Just bounce off the wall, you'll be fine. Just go around as good as you can. No, so um, that was the only real blind one, but I guess you got, you got about a second to see the boards, which yeah. is enough time. Wow. Uh, <sighs> I don't second. know, 280 kilometers an hour. A few, oh my word. Over 100 miles an hour. A second's enough. Mm. So That's crazy. Yeah. And that's that's how we judge breaking points uh, and everything is those polystyrene boards at the side. Wow. Very simple. Way that was it. very simple and I had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> so you said 210 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I think uh, turn nine, I'd be guessing a bit, but it's about the entry speed there would be about 250 in Formula 2 kilometers an hour <clears throat> so i guess that would be 140 miles an hour roughly my car's top speed is like 110 <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't even picture going through a corner at that speed yeah no so what with your car fab that's got squeaky wheels <laughs> <laughs> that left wheel every time you yeah. break goes Aah! you might try and go in the corner and you might not exit it in a yeah. car like that <laughs> especially not oh. in the wet of imola oh, yeah, it'll be all no. over the all over the shot in your car fab. in the wet yeah that must be mad <laughs> yeah how was it for you on uh Friday, it was a very wet weekend. Yeah, so it was my first time ever driving the Formula 2 car in the wet. Oh, wow. Um, I'd driven the Formula 3 car in the wet, um, but the Formula 2 car is very different. It's a lot heavier. It's got a lot more power. So to drive it in the wet at a free practice was, was intense, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed driving these cars in the wet with the downforce they have. Yeah. Um, they stick to the ground a lot, and then suddenly they just snap and you end up in the gravel which which i did in qualifying um <laughs> but you know it's all learning yeah um, no great early on into the season all learning yeah yeah exactly i would have preferred maybe to do some testing in the wet yeah but, uh, it just adds a bit bit of difference jumping in you know for the first time <clears throat> in a wet weekend 100%. at a race weekend it, it makes it more exciting i think so it was wet and cold um I wasn't that cold in the car. Sometimes it gets cold, but when you're driving... I was going to ask I've got that. so many questions about what it's like in the car. Yeah, yeah, well, feel free. Hmm. I do get wet, if if, you, if that's a question. Really? <laughs> the spray does come in. It doesn't glamorously go over the top. It ends wow. up quite a lot of it inside. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. You, what, your suit, is your suit waterproof? or No, no. It's no. fireproof, but not waterproof. <laughs> that's so random, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Otherwise, wow. I think we get quite hot, maybe. If it's yeah, oh, yeah proof, true I guess. yeah you think what's waterproof like neoprene is it really loud for you so i have earplugs in um, and, and, and a helmet so and like, a helmet so it is loud but do you reckon it's louder for us watching yeah watch watching yeah, it yeah, I think wow it's louder, yeah. even mm. though you're driving that's yeah. crazy if i'm in the garage or something when they just start the car it's uh it's really loud and, and when I, you put your earplugs in straight miles. away like say you're getting in the car you put your ear, so many yeah. basic questions by the way we, <laughs> we don't know anything <laughs> You, you get ready, you put your earplugs in, you put your helmet on. Mm -hmm. What's in the earplug straight away? Are you then talking to someone on the team or are you listening to a bit of music? So I'll put, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, music isn't allowed. I Is think it not? Some, some drivers would like that, but no, there's no, that would be wicked. There's no that. radio one or talk sport one. No. <laughs> oh, no. Or you pit stop podcast. Yeah, you can't listen to the pit stop <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Imagine flying through a corner listening to you and me chat that. shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. absolutely Just listening that. to this podcast in, in Barcelona. <laughs> no. Um, so I put, so the way it goes is... Just before I get into the car, I put my earplugs in, which are molded to my ears. Mm -hmm. um, I've got those custom. Um, so custom earplugs go in, balaclava, fireproof balaclava, helmet on, hands device on, which is the neck restraint thing to stop your neck 
going too far forwards in a crash. That's mm. what that is. Okay. Um, which sits sort of here. I'm yeah. sure you've seen it. Uh, and then get in. My mechanic will do up the belts for me because I can't see. I can't look down enough to do it all my yeah. wow. myself. So my mechanic does the belts for me. Um, and then I'll switch the car on. I'll do a radio check with my engineer uh, just to check that's working. If it's not, a bit more of a panic. Um, I do have some spare. I always take a spare set of earplugs yeah. and stuff with me in case that ever happens. We got enough time to change it. Mm. It just adds a bit, bit less time. Um, radio check, maybe a check on the weather. Like in Imola, I was asking if it was going to rain or if it was going to stop raining. Um, and then head to the pit lane and go through a few final last checks there. Like uh, just confirming what the run plan is maybe in qualifying or stuff like that. Wow. Cool. This is also fascinating. How long have you been, been racing for, like in sort of the formula cars? So I started karting in 2012. Uh, I did that until 2016. And then I moved up to car racing in 2016. So um, roughly six years. Yeah. If your maths is correct. Yeah, uh, probably not, but... Wait, started in 2012? <laughs> Karting. Oh. So, oh, so, okay, yeah. so cars, completely different from 2016. So yeah, six, six years. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, I mean, do you still get like nervous? I mean, I'm sure you get nervous for every race, but is there like, do you get like a fear still before every race? No, I wouldn't say a fear. No. Um, just anticipation, maybe. Adrenaline. Just nervous to get started. When, when you're sat on the grid, I think we sit on the grid for about 10 minutes before the start of the race, and that's a long 10 minutes. Yeah, I bet it yeah, must yeah, feel yeah. really long for you. I usually always mess up my toilet break, so I really need the toilet in that 10 minutes <laughs> we, as we've well. We've always said on the podcast, if we were drivers, we'd just go in the suit. Yeah, we'd just, just go in the suit. Yeah. I don't think my mechanic would be happy <laughs> cleaning that out at the end. <laughs> So when you're sat on the grid and you've got your earphones in, is it just dead silent until someone talks to you? Or can you radio yeah. and talk to them? I can I can talk to them, but usually it's quite silent, yeah. Wow. Just the sound of maybe cars, engines on, but... Uh, that must it, give you a lot of like thinking time, just sitting there in silence, knowing yeah. it's all about to happen. Yeah, <laughs> so I have a performance coach who's there with me, and obviously my engineers and stuff are there. But they're, my engineers are busy doing checking stuff with the car, checking nothing's fallen off on the lap to the grid anything important like Good job that there. yeah checking maybe a dog hasn't gone in the side or something which has happened to me what yeah i've had a dog in the side of my car somehow what what can... before the race or during before it got out before the start of the race but uh i was in this was in formula four that I was is in... crazy yes What's i, happened I was in a track in in italy called valle lunga um near the south of italy and uh at some point before or when I got in the car to then getting to the grid, a dog somehow got in <laughs> the, the car. That's the way you're just saying a dog. <laughs> yeah, got in the car and was in the side bit, like under the covers, um, in between the side of the car and the engine. And uh, I got to the grid and the mechanic or the marshal at the side heard this dog barking. <laughs> this is and so random. It was in the side of my car. I think there's a video of it somewhere. Oh, um, we got to find that video. And it, that and it was fine. Uh, it survived two laps to the grid. Oh, wait, it went out with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh dro I drove around. <laughs> oh, it, my it God. It survived. That's the first ever dog to have ever been around a formula. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Not, not just once, twice. Wow. Um, and it survived and it was fine. And they, that is unbelievable. They took the side off the car and before they catched it, it ran off. That is not. just ran down the street. Have you ever spoken about that on a on a podcast? Before? No, I've never. Oh, brilliant! Give us all the story. Pit stop yeah. exclusive. That, yeah, that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> that is unreal. But yeah, we love to hear stuff like that. Um. So yeah. So back to checking on the grid, checking that nothing like <laughs> there's that's no happened. dogs in the car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all those things. Um. It's quite quiet. Yeah. Do you notice down from F four to F three to F two? Do it? Does everything feel more like checks, more serious the more you go? From F4 like, to would F3, you, Would you yeah. not get a dog in your car in F2? Would that? I be... don't think so. I think someone <laughs> would notice it in Formula 1 paddock. <laughs> I think there's a lot of marshals there, so yeah. I don't think that would happen. But yeah. um, in terms of checks from F3 to F2, it's quite similar. All the teams do both, so they're very serious in, in both. Uh, the only thing that's quite different for Formula 2 is we've got, I'll speak about it a bit later, is carbon brakes, um, which do a lot of things. But the mainly cool thing on the grid, which I like, is when you get them nice and hot as they start to smoke on the grid, which I'm sure you might have seen in Formula yeah, 1, yeah, yeah. Mm. right at the race start, um, as the lights are counting down, there's some smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, that's the break. So that's the only difference. I quite like doing that. It's very satisfying. 
cool. sitting on the grid with some smoke coming out. Yeah, as long yeah. as then it doesn't transition into fire, it's quite satisfying. You've seen that happen <laughs> a few times. Yeah. This season, yeah. Yeah. Wow. See, we, we've we've learned probably more in the space of what fifteen minutes than we've ever learned. Oh yeah, we really ever. have. We really because yeah. there's so these are like unanswered questions. Really, mm. they're mm. the kind of things which you wouldn't really know unless you genuinely speak to a driver. Yeah. Because yeah. not every driver is just going to go on the internet and be like, I do this, I do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that does lead me to, you had a YouTube channel at one point. I did have a YouTube channel. I found channel. some of your vlogs. Great. I think, my opinion, from yeah. someone who does social media a lot, bring that back. I will try. I will try. I really enjoy doing it. No one it. really does it, do they? No, no, no one does yeah, it. That's, now do it. It that's would why be I amazing. started to do it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone would love to watch, I think. Like the race weekend, everything you're doing. Do you have the time to do it? Is that maybe that's, why you don't? That's why I stopped was the time. I mean, I, I could probably film it all, but editing it then afterwards would be more difficult, especially mm. with back-to-back -back weekends. Sounds like you need a couple of editors. Yeah, I think back so. Back-to-back weekends. Yeah, okay, we'll edit them. We'll, we'll help out. We'll, that's oh, cheers, fine. wonderful. And we'll do voiceover as well. <laughs> Commentate on it. Yeah, so here's Ollie doing something. Uh, <laughs> We're not sure what it is. Yeah, uh, but it's, it looks important. <laughs> that's, that's pretty spot on. That's what it'd be like. Back to back weekends. You have back to back weekends then? Yeah, so we have, uh, I think this year we might even have a triple, triple header weekend. But uh, our first back to back is coming up. Actually, no, it's been. It was Bahrain and Jeddah. We had a back to back weekend. Uh, so flew straight from Bahrain to Jeddah. Next one is Barcelona and Monaco. So is that where literally like a Saturday race, Sunday race? No, so, okay, a back-to-back -back weekend back -to -back weekends, like. would be double weekends, literally one after the other. Oh, so like one week there's a race, yes. the next week there's... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got so it, like got that. it, got it. So we raced in Bahrain <laughs> back in the beginning of March, I think it was, uh, and then flew immediately from Bahrain to Jeddah for the next weekend. That would be a back-to-back weekend so is the f2 calendar different to the f1 calendar um it's less races so we have 14 cool. races this year mm -hmm. whereas formula one has 23 22 23 22 this year, 23 so is that why you're not in miami yes next week because yes. they're doing so is the gap 14 to 22 that would work out right in their mate race gap is that the w series now yes so where ah. that, that's, this all makes sense now. And the yeah. Sky Sports have taken the W Series as well, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to watch that. But yeah, that's in that gap. Wow. This all makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. So W Series is in Miami. Formula 2 and Formula 3 aren't. Um, so is that just a weekend off for you? Or are you racing somewhere else? A weekend off, a weekend off. So Formula 2 won't race without Formula 1. So every Formula 2 event is also a Formula 1 event at the same, the same track. Yeah. Whereas a Formula 1 event might not have F2 there but it will have W Series or, or some other supporting event. I'd love to know your thoughts on Jeddah because, I don't know, we had Jeddah at the start of this year and also at like the very end of last year, right? And I, I think it was the start of this year, but there was like so many crashes, man. Yeah. And it's kind of, I think Formula One and Formula Two, like that's kind of what you're, not what you want to see. No one wants to see anyone get hurt in a crash, but that's kind of part of the excitement of it. Um but yeah, it's not nice when you see like pile up after pile up. Yeah, there was quite a few in, in the Jeddah weekend in a mix of both F2 and, and F1. I mean, as a driver, you don't really think about it. You sort of see really? it happen. I watched the uh, F1 quali from the Alpine F1 garage I was in there. So when Mick had his big accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it was a bit different then when, when it was red flagged for a long time and the medical crew was there. Everyone pays attention a bit more. Obviously, it was great to see he was, he was fine. Oh, that was a long one, wasn't um, it? Yeah. yeah, that was a long red flag there. But most of the time as drivers, first of all, you can kind of tell if, if the person's all right and you just forget about it. You don't really want to be focusing on it. No, yeah, yeah. I completely understand. Because um, the last thing you want is to be on, on a qualifying lap thinking, oh, there was a massive accident here an hour ago. Yeah. Because um, obviously you're pushing to the limit. So, yeah, as drivers, you tend not to focus on it. Um, we tried to do not do too much research coming into this, but when I did YouTube you, one video came up of a crash, and I want to ask you about it because we never, we might never get the chance to sit down with a driver again. What's it like in that moment? So I think the one you're referencing, Silverstone. Yeah, I think it was the, the F3. Like the whole back of the F3. car comes. Yeah, up. yeah. So I got in in that accident. I got um, some contact going into the chicane, which gave me a rear puncture. So when I um. went on power, the car just spun because it had no traction anymore. And um, I spun in front of all of the cars yeah. behind. I think I was in 11th or 12th at that point. So I was quite high up. There was still 
maybe 15, 20 cars behind me. Um, so I spun, I mean, I pull the clutch, which is something you do to make sure the car doesn't stall. Is that on the, on the, That's steering? On the steering wheel? Yeah. It's on the back, um, which is important in F3 because it saves you time, but especially in formula two, the car doesn't have a starter. So if the car stalls, you're out, you can't go again. Uh, in oh, formula two. Wow. right. So I pulled the clutch and then I sort of looked to my left and I saw I was rolling back in front of yeah, all these cars. That's what I mean, that moment. What's that like? It's not nice. Yeah, I, bet. Yeah. <laughs> I was sort of just looking, 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 and I was like thinking everyone's going to avoid me. And then I was able to see that this car wasn't going to avoid me. And I let go of the steering wheel and got hit. Um, I think it was 26G oh, was the man. crash, uh, apparently, in that. Um, luckily, the, the engine broke apart, which is what it's meant to do. Um, which lessens the impact to me because to me it didn't feel like that big you know it's just like someone pushing you quite hard basically but mm. it wasn't painful or anything when um, that goes down to all the health and safety that they, yeah. they do which mm. is all amazing safety. yeah yeah which is which is really good and they keep pushing forwards on that which as drivers we like to see as well mm. if there so, is like going to be an impact design are you guys told to have i seen something where you have to take your hands off the wheel yeah so in formula three and formula two and the lower categories we let go of the wheel because there's no power steering so that means basically we turn the wheels and the wheels go back into the steering with the full force. Um, so we let go of the wheel because if we don't, it will just break our wrists. Yeah, yeah. snap around um, with it. Yeah, the wheel goes crazy and everything. But in Formula One, they have power steering. Um, so some of them you'll see, I think just as instinct, they let go. But a few of the older guys, if they crash, they, they hold on because it gives you something else to brace against. Yeah, So they, they have power steering in Formula One. And not in the rest. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. So what about like ABS and like traction control? Is that all? So none of us have ABS or traction control. Uh, that's why you see cars spinning maybe in the wet out of pit lane or yeah, on cold yeah. tires and stuff. But uh, yeah, Formula One has power steering. I guess they do produce a bit more downforce and weight through the wheel than we do. But I think some drivers would like to have power steering in that's Formula mad. Two for sure. Do you think that yeah. ultimately means like a formula one car would be easier to drive than a formula two car i think physically from what i've spoken to some people who i who've driven them in terms of weight on the wheel and through your arms and stuff yeah it, it's a lot easier because wow. they can basically make it as light as you want it to but um in terms of maybe g-forces and cardio the races are double the length of formula two they're two hours long mm -hmm. um it's harder in that in that regard on the neck and everything they pull more g-forces like that because they're higher speed so it's easier in some aspects and, and more difficult in others you talking about your neck there it kind of made me think so we, we have a few questions here and um we really wanted to sort of know about i guess kind of when you're in the gym kind of how you prepare your body to race and then also how you kind of balance racing and training with just uh, like the rest of your life like friends family so I go to the gym every day, Monday to Friday, if wow. I'm home, um, just for a few hours. I'll do a mix of normal sort of gym stuff, lower body, upper body, deadlifts, bench press, basically normal stuff. And then I guess really the only extra thing we do is neck. Um, and I've got a, a harness that goes around, um, similar to boxers. I've heard boxers train mm -hmm. their neck yeah, quite yeah. a bit, yeah. obviously getting hit in the head the less your head moves around the better yeah um so this is actually a, a boxing sort of harness which goes on and then my trainer attaches a pretty gruesome metal chain to it and just pulls just yanks it yeah with a scale on the end wow and we can sort of work out the force that's going through my neck um, your neck doesn't look like abnormally big like no no so i can do i think the most i've done is about 35 kilos force just on my neck so i guess if you could 35, 35 that's a lot kilogram weight just on my head yeah it's quite quite a bit but formula one they'll do probably another 10k more 45 kilos wow. just on their neck um there's I mean, a lot of it physical fitness do you think you can be more physically fit which will make you a better driver i wouldn't say if you were the fittest person in the world it wouldn't make you a better driver but it takes one worry away from you you mm -hmm. don't want to be doing a two-hour race and after one hour be thinking i'm really yeah. tired yeah no, or, or your neck starting to go or anything so <clears throat> it probably doesn't give you an advantage but it takes away a disadvantage that could be there 
um, especially in, in Formula 2 and Formula 3, where you don't have the power steering, you can get a lot of blisters on your hands and stuff if, if your grip strength's not good. Mm. Um, and then that can be very painful in a race weekend, especially if sure. it's in the first race. And you've got to do another race with blisters on your hands. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty big factor in it. Um, and people sort of underestimate how fit I think racing drivers are. You, you are athletes, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. And especially if you see... I'll go to George, loves posting uh, topless pictures on Instagram, George yeah, Russell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, does he? I, actually, yeah. I haven't seen that. I, don't know. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see that they're athletes, Formula One drivers, yeah. I guess, because you don't see them literally sprint down a football field or whatever, or they're just sat in a car. But mm. yeah, they are athletes. And I think they could go toe to toe, some of the fittest guys in F1 with some of the fittest footballers. You know, they do run sub. 18 minute 5Ks and all wow. of this. Well, I know Lewis is really into it. Yeah, yeah. Lewis is, doesn't really post much on social media, but I think he's very, very physically fit. Yeah. So so you're working out like five days a week. You're going to the Alpine factory for, I don't know, what did you say that you do there when you go there? I'll probably be there for three or four hours. Yeah. Um, just training in the gym. I'll do a sort of one hour, one hour and a half session in the gym. Have lunch there. Have a Oh, meeting. so you gym at the... At the Alpine at, factory? At Alpine, yeah. Cool. They've got a big gym there for the drivers. Cool. Um, so I train in the gym there, have a meeting maybe with with my academy boss, go for lunch there, um, have a look around if there's anything to do and then come back. Cool. And then your weekends, what your week, I, mean, I suppose your weekends, you're racing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm not racing, um, which is more less than it is, you know, I'm usually more often at a racetrack. Yeah. Um, if there's an F1 race on, I might even be in the Alpine factory then on the Sunday watching uh, watching the race from there, um, sitting down with some of the engineers that are based at the factory during the weekend and seeing what's happening with the race there. Gives a different atmosphere as well. Rather yeah. than just watching at home, I can go into the into the Formula One team and see how everyone's reacting there. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, because you're in the Alpine Academy now, which is amazing, by the way. Congratulations. That's wicked. Thank you. Does that... Is this like... Obviously, you've probably always wanted to be in Formula One. Is this like the old McGill? Yeah. When you're in an academy like that, what? how do you work with them to then get you to that Formula One? Like, do you have like a plan or do you have like a, is it all solely performance? Or like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like from now, what would be the, the steps you'd have to take to get into Formula One? Would it just be winning races week in, probably. week out? Or would it... I mean, as much as anyone says, no, you can have a plan, this and that, you kind of have to win Formula yeah. 2 or be up there to, to get into Formula 1. You know, you couldn't be with an academy regardless of what, whichever one it is and finishing probably even 10th and they wouldn't they wouldn't put you into Formula 1. Um, they might very well put you into something else, like the Ferrari Academy might put you into the Ferrari GT side or the other Ferrari racing aspects, but they probably wouldn't put you into Formula 1. So... It, in the end, it does come down to performance if you want to get to Formula One. Yeah, mm. is that your main goal to be? Formula it is one? my main goal, but I'm also realistic in terms of there's a lot of different categories out there that you can yeah. be professional in. There's so many, isn't there? Oh, that's what we've realised. Yeah. yeah. What about like Formula E, Formula E, IndyCar? You know, all of these categories are at the top of their levels, and you get paid in all of them. So there's a lot of different aspects to be a professional racing driver other than just Formula One. But yeah. I mean, that's still my goal and that's still what I would love to be in, yeah. of course. Yeah, amazing. Formula E would be amazing. They've got a race outside our flat, haven't they? We yeah, live right yeah. by the yeah. XL and like the Formula E one goes around the XL. In London, like did you see it last year? No, no, I didn't. I was away, annoyingly, but it's literally right there and I really will, really want to see it this year. Did you go to it? No, no, I didn't. I was, I was busy as well, but I think the Formula E ones are cool where they go to the really the middle of cities. Yeah. and try and do a race that's cool yeah i will try and get to the one in london well i'm pretty i mean we can see it from our balcony can't we it's is literally that... right i don't know okay i might have got it wrong i don't I, when i told you i think it's on that little bit of road i don't I know it's is. definitely not on that little no. bit. it's about this wide <laughs> <laughs> but, i think it's like round the corner but the xl is right there so i think it's yeah. just like round that bit like where i go to my car yeah yeah that car park that would be part of the track i think unless yeah. it's all inside well, we're going to be there. So if you're there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll try and get down because I think it'd be cool to see a race in the middle of London. Oh, mate, that'd yeah, be sick. Yeah, they were trying to do one in Canary <laughs> Wharf, I think. I think they were trying to do another one in Canary Wharf. Have another for one. The, for, was that for the F1? 
Uh, I know they were looking at something to do with F1 in London, but mm. I don't think anything ever came of it. Right. Where's your favourite track to race? Ooh, to race. Um, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I think probably I've got two favourites which aren't in Formula 2. Um, is one in Bathurst, which is Australia, uh, and one in Macau which is an uh, island off of Hong Kong and China. Mm. Um, Hearing you say all these places, my God, you must, you travel so much. Yeah. Your yeah. life is so quick moving on the road, like doing all this stuff. Such hard work, like endurance is amazing. Yeah. Do, do you find it hard to be out of balance? Like how strenuous and how much work goes into this and having like a family life, seeing your friends and I don't know, like... If I went away all this all this time, I think, well, my girlfriend would hate me. So, like, I'm, I mean, like, is it hard to have relationships and friends and people? And... It is pretty difficult. Most of my friends are actually people from Formula 3, Formula yeah, 2, Formula 1. Yeah, surround yourself people who do the same like, thing. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm just with all these people all the time, so they end up being the people you speak to the most. Mm. Um, my girlfriend's very understanding of me traveling all this time, which is good. <clears> and, and obviously, my family, you know, help me get into this, so they understand it as well. Um but yeah, I mean, there's not really much time, especially as I'm in Alpine Monday to Friday and then most race weekends I'm, I'm racing or busy there as well. There's really not much, yeah. not much downtime from the beginning of the race season until the end. They're the, the sacrifices you make, I guess, though, to be in a position that you're in. So fair enough. Exactly. I guess any other elite sports person, whether it's football, tennis, rugby, it's all very similar, isn't it? Yeah. They're all busy training and, and doing their... And you're doing one of the coolest things in the world. Like, we watch you on TV. We've been watching exactly. on TV at home. We were watching you when we are yeah. out there. Like, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah, I never realised how how big it was, especially kind of in the junior formula. You know, everyone looks to F1, but then when they've started to promote Formula 2 and Formula 3 a lot recently. Yeah. Um. So I was on like the head of sky i think after bahrain for a bit i was one of the big pictures on sky no nice. i know uh, i had people sending pictures to me from school and i was like <laughs> oh i didn't even realize you <laughs> knew what this was or, or anything and they were yeah. like isn't that you on sky and i was like i guess so yeah well the fact that f2 follows the f1 i mean that's that's unreal for yeah. you guys in the f2 yeah it's really good you know you, we get the fans and everything outside which yeah. is really cool now they've been allowed back yeah um it was great to see at Imola, the Tifosi in the stands, the Ferrari fans, um, mm. and just walking in and out of the track, everyone there. It's such a cool atmosphere. Yeah, there's so many Ferrari fans there, weren't there? And then there was, yeah, it was like a sea of red out there. Mm. We were literally just staring at the Ferrari fans, and then there was like three or four Red Bull fans scattered, and they'd like cheer when something happened, yeah, and you could just yeah. see them stand up, but like <laughs> you couldn't hear anything. No, it was, um, it was a good race. I think whilst we've got a driver on here, it'd be really interesting to ask you because I think your is your like favorite driver ever Hamilton. I think I've seen a one clip of somewhere. one of them, yeah, like an idol, like for sure, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, from your opinion, like what what do you think to the end of last season, the very last race? I think I need to be probably careful what I say. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, yeah, I definitely understand that. I just think, if, imagine that was you. I'd be I'd be gutted. Yeah. Um, I guess a world championship is a world championship. It doesn't matter how many you've won, whether it's one, two, three, four or seven, like Lewis. If you lose it, it's still gonna be heartbreaking. Yeah. So I guess I it might help if we if I give it from like my opinion. I was like, How on earth all of a sudden <laughs> well this wouldn't happen any other day, any other race. Like it's never you've never seen something like this happen before. So why is it happening now, I guess is where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, I can imagine you have to be careful with that. So we'll just say that you'll be gutted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'd be gutted. And I think everyone was under a lot of pressure and stress and there was a lot of media attention around it. So I guess people are only human. So whether there was just issues from that, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I mean, I still think regardless of whoever won it, uh, it shouldn't be taken away from Max that he still performed the rest yeah, of the year. Stats, absolutely no yeah. matter how how it ended in abu dhabi i think people would have said whoever won then won and deserved it because it was a great fight throughout the whole oh year. yeah it was incredible the whole season was nuts wasn't it yeah i just wanted to go back so i mean you, you a few minutes ago you mentioned about your family um kind of helping you or being supportive of you getting into this when you were why did you get in to motorsports was it because it was already in your family or 
what kind of inspired you to get into karting and then racing? So a bit different to most people where they might have a family member who's raced or just really love racing. Uh, mine was a birthday party when yeah. I was 12 years old. Oh, wicked. Um, my parents had never been into racing or anything. They'd never done it themselves. Uh, and I did a birthday party when I was, I think I was like 11 or 12, around that age. And I uh, just really enjoyed it. And I went back and back again. And then the person who ran the place, it was just one of those indoor karting places, you know, the team sport yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of them down in down in Southampton. And uh, he just said, look, if you're going to keep doing this and you really enjoy it, you can go outside and there's proper competitions and everything. But your dad said, your dad said that? Or? The, the owner of this team sport oh, okay. indoor place said that to my dad. Right. Um, and he knew a few people who own teams and stuff and that's how it started wow that's cool and your parents have been behind you the whole way basically yeah sick yeah. supporting me since since day one wow i love karting maybe i should get down the team sport <laughs> track and see what i can pull out the back we've got <laughs> a few a bit too late for me to get into anything we've got a few video ideas involving go-karts haven't we oh yeah does that mean you're pretty i guess you're pretty quick in a go-kart aren't you it's been a while since i've driven one okay and, brilliant and you're to be in honest, for our go-karting competition i'm, I'm ready yeah i could <laughs> jump in from we've signed you up already <laughs> wonderful but uh yeah to go from cars to karting is completely different you know i'd still be decent i'd hope to say but uh actually going back in and racing against people who do karting full-time mm. they're in like a different league yeah like i i even think you know the best people in in f1 um max lewis whoever if they're not karting every week if they go into a in a race in carts they'll get destroyed yeah, well it's completely no. different go-karts like drift don't they yeah round corners yeah, but yeah. you'd never do that in an f1 car no really. no and they got a lot of rear team. axle and you see them sliding about everywhere mm. so it would be quite quite impressive to see actually if you just took the whole f1 grid put them in a cart Imagine race that. we could be onto something here we could know? be onto something here that sounds good i think you'd there are probably some contract breaches there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not wrong. We seem to be able to wangle our way in somehow, no, don't we? <laughs> our first ever race run Sky, so let's see what we can do. Now. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make it happen. Let's try and get them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how do you find the new regulations? New year, changes to the cars? In Formula 1, it looks it looks really cool. Um, I think the cars, first of all, look very different, which is something we haven't seen recently, a big shake-up in the look of the cars. Mm. Um, and it seems to have, Bought, bought teams back to the front and shuffled it about a bit with Mercedes now dropping down, Ferrari coming right back up. I think it's really cool to see. Mm. And the racing does seem closer, which I know they were worried about, maybe it not being as close as they hoped, but for now it does seem to be... Well, we saw it in Imola because the DRS wasn't actually working for like half the race, right? Yeah, what happened? I you didn't see the race. <laughs> yeah, the DRS wasn't working for like half the race. Really? Yes, but they still managed to... <laughs> we still saw like, you know, three or four cars bunched up together but i mean have the f2 cars changed as no, well no, no so oh. the f2 regulations are the same <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, did you think ours had changed yeah as well? i no. thought you were all under the same regulations i wouldn't well, I have knew, asked that God, I, knew, I, I mean I only suck. like the wheels hadn't changed because they, they still look the same size yeah but no do you have um, drs in f2 yeah we have drs yeah yeah um same as f1 same zones everything but yeah, our regulations have <laughs> been the same for a few years now. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. Oh, That's wow. hilarious. But have, have you had a chance to get out in one of the F1 cars? Not yet, no. Possibly oh. in the future, I'm mm, not sure. But yeah, uh, cool. definitely. Let's see, let's see how this season goes first and see yeah. if anything happens. Surely Alpine could hook that up for you. I'm sure if I did well, they could. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> probably need to, need to make a few improvements. But I mean... That's why I'm with them, is they'll help me improve and then Definitely. they'll give me opportunities when I do. So Yeah, it's early days. It's yeah. it's so hard, man, because, <clears throat> I mean, the thing that we've noticed just through watching the F1 is that, like, there is only, you know, fraction of a second between first and, and last a lot of the time. So it's not to say that, like, just because someone's at the back of the grid, they're not very good. I mean, everyone who races is, like, still an unbelievable driver. So, yeah, man, t but just making up those, like, couple of seconds must be really, really difficult. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's not even a couple of seconds, it's tenths of seconds yeah. from, in F2 especially, from uh, sort of 15th to P1 can be like half a second, <sighs> which is nothing at all. I don't even know how to quantify how it's quick It's like a blink, it, I Exactly, guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we um, saw how quick they were for the first time, well, when we went this weekend, it was our first race. It's the first time we've seen it in, in person. We couldn't believe how quick the safety car was. That's one of our biggest goals. We want to get into the mm. back of the safety yeah, car yeah. whilst it's going I think around. it's weird to see how quick the safety car is from the outside 
but when we're following it in Formula 2 or you hear about it in Formula 1 they complain yeah all the time it's so slow really actually yeah, for it? us following it it's really slow and it must feel horrible for the poor guy driving yeah because he, he must be pushing pushing as hard as he can and yeah. to the metal as quick as they wow. can yeah yeah I'm sure he's pushing as hard as he can <laughs> <laughs> we're all complaining he deserves to win a, like a championship as well the safety yeah, car yeah. Is it, do you reckon it's like a like a racer of some sort in that car I surely think, you can just put a random person in that yeah, car and go drive as quick as you can yeah I think his name's uh, Bert, Bert Mylander and he's raced before. Oh, and, I've heard that name before. Yeah, and DTM and stuff. He's he's won races and stuff. So he's a old oh, racing Oh, so he goes driver. to the tracks and does it for all of them? He's the same safety car driver all year. Oh, and is it the wow. same safety car for F1 and F2? Yes. Yeah. Whether it's the Mercedes or the Aston Martin. We've, I've, only, I've only ever seen the Aston Martin. I've only seen the Aston. Yeah. Yeah. I know last year they swapped it. I'm not sure of what's going on this year, but I know they like to have two different ones. Mm. Um, but yeah, we have the same one, whichever... We've got his name now. We need to follow that guy and tell him we want to sit in the back of the safety car. I've already forgotten it. <laughs> yeah, it's on Marlin. the board. <laughs> Marlon. Bert, Bert Mylander. Bert Mylander. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking Marlon Brando. I actually, <laughs> actually don't know how to pronounce his first name, so I've messed, maybe messed that up. <laughs> oh, don't worry about Mylander that. is his surname for sure. Okay. That'd be a cool, cool podcast, actually. Yeah. yeah. Speaking to him. <laughs> well, I mean, we've asked you a load of questions. We do know that uh, we think you've got a few questions... I do. Us. I have five questions for you, ranging Uh-oh. in difficulty. <laughs> As you guys listen and know, we listen. love to be quizzed by the people we get on the podcast. At this point in the podcast, if you're still listening, please do hit the follow button or subscribe, whatever you're listening on, Apple or Spotify. Rate the podcast five stars. And Ollie has got five questions for us to see who knows more, me or Fab. Damn. Let's see what we've learned. <laughs> I do. They're in my little notebook here. So I'll get what are these questions Trusty about? Notebook. Well, they're about Formula One. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just, that helps well, a little bit. Right, so SpaceX is owned by. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, so, first, first question. Uh, I'll do easiest to start. Okay, good. And hardest to end with. Okay, right. I think that's a fair way of. That's, Should we answer on like three or something, Fab? Because we'll both if we both have our own answer. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, right. first question. The youngest F1 race winner is who and how old were they? Amazing question. You know this. All right. You ready? Yeah. Wait, Wait, do you think you don't know it? Youngest race winner. Race winner and how old? Okay. I mean, if you get the race winner, that's... Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Sebastian Vettel. Damn. It's Verstappen. And it was 19. 18. Oh! <laughs> you said that so confidently as well. Yeah. Right, like, I've got the time. person, so the every age time. must be right. Every time I think I'm right, it comes across as me being like, he no, actually yeah, asked me that. He asked me that before, and I think I said said that the first time and got it wrong. <laughs> Half a point. No, it's, right. it's, it's Verstappen at 18 years old, 134 oh. days. I'll have half a point, I think. So, yeah, 18. That's That's, that's amazing. It's younger than me now. So they changed the rules a bit. So you can't get into F1 that young again. But uh, Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm not sure what the exact reason was, but uh, it's pretty much impossible now to get into a Formula 1 that young. So I think that record will stand for a while. Do you think Max will break a lot of records? Um... I think it would be difficult now. Because it's break. such a closer field, more people compete. Yeah, I think they, they wanted to stop maybe what's happened with Lewis, him winning so many championships in a row. So I think to do what Lewis and Michael have done again will be extremely difficult. But mm-hmm. let's see in the future, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe mm-hmm. there's other records that could be broken. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm sure he looks very pr- he, very promising, of yeah. course. So yeah, yeah. he's doing great. Um, and let's see what happens with this year as well. Yeah. Maybe, maybe new record for closest championship again i don't know that'd be sweet so next question is the youngest f1 champion who and how old okay okay now i feel like I'm <laughs> okay now I, now i'm on to something <laughs> all right three, three two, two one, one. Vettel. sebastian vettel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay we've got to go three, how two, old? one for how old okay three, three two, two one, one 19 23. Oh! oh 19. <laughs> no, <we're near> <laughs> 19! 19! Shit. Well, Tw- I'm closest. 23 years old, 134 days again. Same as Max was. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's weird. So, yeah, that's that, that is weird. And wasn't it both at the same team? Up. Or was one at Toro Rosso? Uh, both were Red Bull. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's, that's weird. Yeah, that's Red cool. Bull are doing yeah. Sonic Sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> 134 days. That seems a bit suspicious. It is a bit sus, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What I was that thinking. would be unbelievable for a world champion. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad, though. Look, we're actually doing better than we thought. So, getting a bit harder again. Which race has the fewest laps ever? And bonus point, if you know exactly how many laps it was. Oh, no, 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 oh. no. I'm like so close, but like so far away at the same time. I know what it is. The fewest and lap. It was which which and is why? like the longest track. We should know this. We should know this because we went through the menu on the game. No, no, I've got my The menu outside. as if it's like a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, so... I'll choose the spa for today. Or... So we're saying which Ooh. track has the least laps, not what was the least lap race. No, ever. no. Which race has had the fewest laps ever like completed race distance i guess i probably could have worded that better oh. like completed race distance okay All which right. race lasted the shortest i guess would be yeah a, i've, I've got my answer it. okay i'm ready all right you're okay okay three, three two, two one, one. netherlands belgium, belgium. No! <laughs> that was I, know, a, I know how many laps that was is. a complete guess no i'm thinking of where you're thinking guess. and i know why do you know how many laps for a um, bonus point? I'll say like fifth. I'll say forty nine. No, no, no. <laughs> wasn't it four? It was. It was one lap. Oh, oh wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm I so stupid. It. Yeah, the rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh. So the shortest race ever completed was right. the 2021 Belgium Grand Prix with just one lap. That's ridiculous. Which was on the safety car. Uh, and it lasted three minutes and 27 seconds. That was wow. a good one. And imagine going yeah. out there for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all the poor like people that went to go watch yeah. that stood in the rain. Stood in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. One lap on the safety car. That's brutal. And I believe, I don't have that written down, but I think Nikita Mazepin got the fastest lap. <laughs> oh, no! Nice. For that race. Wow. <laughs> that um, is ridiculous. So. Well, at least, he, at least he runs something. Uh, <laughs> wait, so wait, what year was that? 2021, last were you, year. Were you there? I was there, yeah. Wow. And it was also soaking wet for our races. But you managed to do more laps? Yeah, we, we finished our races. Blimey. So sick. So, I remember leaving the track and this massive thunderstorm came in and it was crazy. Wow. Everything was flooding. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's crazy. That'd be so scary. I, I get scared driving my car well, in the rain. Fab. Good, good work, man. Yeah, I, know. I know. I did say 49 laps, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not so good. <laughs> so I'm not really sure who's leading at the moment. I think we're drawing because yeah, I got I think one so. right, he got one right. Okay. And we both said Vettel didn't know the age. So, yeah, I think right, we're drawing. Right. So, harder. Where was the first ever F1 race held? Uh, and what year oh, for an no. extra point? Oh, no. <laughs> first ever F1 race. I think Fab knows. No, I should, I should know, but I don't think I do. But we'll go anyway. Three, two, one. Monza. France. Ni neither of those. What Damn. about year? So, we could try. Yeah, for the you want to go for year before? Yeah, I... yeah. I would go nineteen fifty-five. And I was going nineteen fifty-nine. Correct decade. Uh, nineteen fifty uh, in Silverstone uh, in the UK. Uh, <clears throat> was God. the first ever F one race. Wow. Uh, and that season had seven races. Wow. Only seven. So it did so did did like Formula One start in England? The first race was in England. Yeah, yeah. England's sort of like the home of motor racing, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's why they call Silverstone the home of motor racing yeah. or the home of Formula One because it started there. That was mm. the first first ever event. I got to ask: Did you know? Are you? Do you know all these answers before anyway? Um, you, what's your history like? What's I think your... if someone had asked me, I'd be confident in knowing. Like I knew that one. Yeah, uh, I knew. Max was the youngest racer. Yeah, I think I'd know all of these. Yeah, no, so just us. You're thing. asking uh, the driver. I, I didn't know this last one. This was oh, okay, a bit well, new for me. No hope, yeah. right. um, so the hardest one is, what was the quickest penalty ever given to someone in their Formula One season? Ooh, you mean quickest as in like in the season? So like first race, second, or y yeah, yeah, like how quickly did someone get a penalty in their rookie Formula One season? All right. Okay. Well, I'm guessing it would be quick. So in their rookie yep. Formula One season. So you just entered Formula One. Okay. How quickly are you going to get a penalty? All right. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know the answer. I don't know the Mine's going to be a complete guess. guess. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. Practice one. I don't know. I, was I gonna, don't know. What to I say. was going to say Nikita Mazepin in his first oh, race. No. Oh, okay. No. 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 So. 
it was nine seconds <laughs> into someone's first. So practice one would be correct. Oh, there we go. <laughs> but you can narrow it down and go nine seconds into their into their career. Who? Do you want to guess that? That would oh, be a yeah, good bonus okay. point. Yeah, let's guess that. I'm going to go... I would just say either Nicholas Latifi or Mazepin. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna go to TV as well. It was Sebastian Vettel. Oh, no. yeah. He was given a penalty nine seconds into his first ever F1 practice. Do you know what happened for speeding in the pit lane? Oh, what a legend. <laughs> that's, that's a cool thing to get a penalty yeah, for. Yeah, I bad. guess so. In Turkey in 2006. Oh wow! Blimey. So uh, yeah, first free practice immediately, literally going out the pit lane to do your first ever lap, <laughs> and you get a penalty. <laughs> well, he followed it up by being the youngest world champion. So yeah, so, yeah. and he was so the bad. youngest race winner until Max. Yep. Took that. So I think I think he has a bright future ahead of him. That guy. Yeah, I love Max. <laughs> <I'm> a- <laughs> Wait, so he would have been fine for that. He got a thousand euro fine or something. Or like- and that comes out of his pocket. Or the team? Uh, um, I'm not too sure. Mm. I mean, I think probably the team. Have you yeah. been fined? I've been fined, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That comes out of my pocket. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess it depends on contracts. Yeah, the Maybe guys I'm... come around and they just take your TV away. Yeah, exactly. Imagine that. Oh, man. Oh, wow. that's hilarious. Uh, well, it's been amazing chatting Yeah, Ollie, you, thank you very much. We've actually got yeah, something for you. you. You're the oh, first really? ever driver yeah, we got that we've gift. had, right? Okay. So we have these blue pit stop hoodies, which They're we are nice. only given to drivers. Ah. So we want to give you one. So you're not a driver because I see you're not wearing <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not allowed one. Um, yeah, here you oh, go. That's great. The first Thanks. ever pit stop hoodie handed out to a driver. Yeah. You don't have to wear it. We just wanted to give you one. No, <laughs> you, have, you, have to wear cool. that. you have to wear it every race weekend. And okay. It, whenever you see a <laughs> I'll camera, tell you what, I'll give you a like mission. Yeah, if yeah. you do wear it when, when there's a camera anywhere and we see you on TV wearing it at some point anywhere, yeah. we'll put it everywhere. I'm we'll sure. We'll make the biggest thing out Un- of it. Understandably, no. Thank you very much. <laughs> mission understood. <laughs> yeah, Ollie, thank you very much for coming on. It's been amazing. Legend. Thank you very much Thanks as for inviting well. us into your house, mate. It's lovely. Thank you. Wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully we can catch up again soon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everyone listening, if you haven't already, please do click the follow button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know why I say subscribe, it's follow. And uh, rate the podcast five stars. We will be back on Thursday. Thank you very much for being here. You want to say bye, Fab? Bye. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you so much.